So hi, everyone. It's Roger Thalia. I'm the music director of Symphony New Hampshire, and I'm pleased to have our principal trumpet with us today, uh, Richard Watson. And Richard, where are you speaking to us from today? And first off, how are you doing? Hey, Roger. Fine, thanks. I'm doing great um, and uh, happy to be uh, talking about uh, Symphony New Hampshire and, um, and what's coming up. Um, I am in my son's music studio, um, which is in Danvers, Massachusetts. So um, only about, uh, you know, an easy 45 or 50 minute drive um, away from Nashua right now. The pandemic has definitely taught me to appreciate every performing um, opportunity that I have. And, um, and, and I appreciate all the work that Symphony New Hampshire, you and our executive director, Mark, there have done to keep uh, Symphony New Hampshire and the Symphony New Hampshire musicians active um, and engaged with an audience uh, through the pandemic. Um, I, uh, there's a lot I don't know. And, and, you know, sort of the managing an arts organization uh, is certainly on that list of stuff that I really don't know. But um, but I imagine it's been uh, incredibly challenging. And, you know, judging from uh, how few um, performing arts organizations have been able to stay as active as Symphony New Hampshire has, um, uh, you know, it, I just have a lot of respect for, for the work that, um, that our orchestra has done uh, to, to stay active and engaged through the pandemic. Yeah, well, thank you. And we're fortunate that our board of directors, our board of trustees, mm. there are a number of positions on that on the board. So it's been great yeah. is getting their uh, feedback because they receive a lot of different studies from different um, um, uh, doctors in the area, and it's been really interesting to hear about uh, their thought their thought process as we plan the season. So that's been so helpful for us, and I just want to say thank you to all of the board of trustee members who are watching, and of course Mark. And, and I, we've been busy trying to see what other orchestras are doing. The survival and the ability for arts organization to thrive is so dependent upon um, uh, who sits on the board of trustees and their, you know, what they bring to the table and their willingness to, yes. um, to, to do the hard work so that we musicians can do the easy part of, you know, just showing up and playing. You've been principal trumpet now how many years in, in Symphony New Hampshire? This is my 24th season I counted wow. the other day. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. So basically right out of, I mean, probably right out of college then for you. I was 20, I think I was 26. I'm 50 <laughs> now. So um, uh, so I think I was 26 uh, when um, Royston Nash, our um, uh, Royston. former and longtime yes. music director, uh, mm -hmm. hired me. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's been like, it's hard yeah. to believe next year it's quarter of a century, but. Um, That's so neat. That's so cool. Well, congratulations. And yeah, how did you. this all start for you in terms of picking up the trumpet and wanting to pursue music as a, a career? Yeah. Um, so violin was my first instrument. I started playing the violin when I was four. And in my family, um, there was, uh, I don't remember the origins of it but there was a i remember there being an expectation that my brother and i have one one sibling an older brother um who uh uh was a cellist and um you know we started out playing a string instrument and then when we got older then we also played a band instrument in addition right so we play an orchestra <laughs> instrument and a band instrument and um and so my brother played uh played cello and then uh, trumpet. And, um, and when it was time for me to, you know, choose a band instrument, um, I, uh, I also chose the trumpet. Um, I, I think I did plenty of stuff because my older brother did it, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure that, um, I don't remember the, the choice of the trumpet being part of that. I do remember uh, an instrument demonstration that, um, uh, that three uh, teachers in our music department did when I was in, it must have been fifth grade. I was probably mm -hmm. 10 years old. And they played the opening fanfare from um, the theme from Rocky. Nice. And I just remember hearing that on three trumpets and thinking, oh, mm -hmm. I want to do that. Like the, that sound was something that really appealed to me. 
and um, and so you know, I played both the trumpet and the violin for um, a few years. I would say I probably stopped playing the violin in public when I was thirteen, maybe. Okay. Um, and uh, and I think I liked the trumpet partly because it was I preferred the trumpet partly because it was the instrument that I chose. I don't remember picking the violin. I think that was probably my mom's choice, you know, when I was four. Um, and so I, I think I like the fact that I picked it and I, I discovered quickly um, that it was um, very versatile that, you know, it could be played in band. It could also be played in orchestra. It could be right. played, um, you know, in a classical setting. It could be played in a jazz setting. Um, and I really liked that about the uh, the instrument also that I could, uh, maybe I was lazy, just like not wanting to practice two instruments. I probably didn't even want to practice one instrument, but, um, but uh, you know, having one instrument that could sort of be my ticket into uh, many different types of performing experiences. Uh, what, were, what were the next steps in that journey after you chose the instrument and played in some of these different groups? Yeah. So, you know, I got lucky. Um, my, uh, my first trumpet teacher is named Dave Dubinsky mm -hmm. and he, um, he was the high school, um, the high school band director and a graduate of Berkeley school of music and, um, and a terrific trumpeter and, and a, and just a, a wonderful um, person and a very engaging personality. And so, um, so Dave was the one that really, um, uh, and he was one of those three uh, uh, music teachers who, who played the opening of Rocky that, uh, <laughs> that hooked me in initially. But, you know, I just, I remember going to my lessons with, uh, with Dave during, um, during school. I think um, my memory is that it was during the school day and that, uh, I'd get, you know, pulled out of a class for a half hour or something. And, um, uh, and I'd have a, um, uh, a, a trumpet lesson. And I just remember loving it. I remember feeling so happy when I was there in the room with him. And, um, uh, and so, you know, fortunately, I think partly because I had had some, um, uh, good earlier musical experiences, you know, as a violinist. Um, so, I was familiar with um, with a lot of general music uh, musical things, right? And um, sure, sure. that I'd learned from playing the violin, and so um, yeah, so I picked up momentum pretty quickly on the on the trumpet. Um, I went to Walnut Hill School for the Arts in Natick, Massachusetts, for my last two years of high school, and um, and in my last year of high school, started studying with Charlie Schluter, who was the yes principal trumpeter of the Boston Symphony um, mm -hmm. from um, he had at that time, let's see that. So that would have been in like 86 or 87. So he'd probably mm -hmm. been principal trumpeter of the BSO. Sorry, Charlie. I wish I, I wish I could remember the dates. It's mm -hmm. probably 82, um, 81 or 82 when he, when, when he took over uh, um, as, uh, as principal trumpet and yeah. um and so, yeah, so, uh, so I loved studying with Charlie. I studied with him from the summer before my senior year of high school through my senior year. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so when it was time to apply to college, uh, Charlie taught at, uh, New England Conservatory of Music in Boston, NEC. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that's where I went cause that's where Charlie taught and I wanted to nice. keep studying. With him. Um, so that was, um, four years and, uh, -huh. uh after college, I went to, I spent three years, um, three summers in the um, Tanglewood Music Center Fellowship Orchestra mm -hmm. um, in 1993, four and five, wow. um, including in 94, uh, we got to film the um, educational video series, Marsalis on Music, when Marsalis Thanks. came and um, nice. uh, spent a few weeks during the summer and, um, and you know sony like i remember that uh those recording sessions they were <laughs> wild you know they're because they're filming too uh -huh. right and they uh, and the project was so well funded that they there were just cameras everywhere like i remember the camera guys talking talking to the camera guys on break and they were complaining like it's so hard to get a clean shot because like the cameras are in everybody else's shot because we just like have so much equipment here yeah, right um but uh but I think though, you know, that educational series came out beautiful. Went and did a, just That's a great so job. Cool. Uh, That's with so it. fun. Yeah. 
and um, amazing memory. And so it's, yeah, I feel good to 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 um, to have been able to be a part of that. Um, so that was um, 93, 94, and 95. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't go to uh, graduate school. I just started um, uh, performing and um, uh, teaching a little bit. And um, and I was fortunate to have, because I grew up in the Boston area, um, it was a little bit easier for me to get started in my performing career, I think, sure. than it might have been if I'd been coming from coming from somewhere else. Now, did, when you were a child or growing up, did you attend the orchestra? Was that something that you did or was that later in life? Yeah, so I didn't know about um, uh, Symphony New Hampshire. It would have been still called Nashua Symphony um, when I was a kid. Um, but I did go to Boston Symphony concerts. Um, there was a um, Boston Symphony did a youth concert series. Um, and my mom always um, signed you know, signed me up to go to those and um, mm -hmm. became involved in organizing first organizing the trips to the concerts and then became more involved as um, as a Boston Symphony volunteer. And the BSO now has a um, program, I've, I believe that it is a current program of theirs, um, they call the instrument petting zoo, where mm -hmm. they have um, uh, young people, you know, come in and sort of go through and get a chance to like, try each instrument yeah, um great. and you know like play play a note on the trumpet play a note on the mm -hmm. tuba play um play a note on the violin play a note on the clarinet um and as you can imagine it's a um complex process i've been involved a few times just yeah. um you know helping out with you know the kids playing the trumpet and you know um and you can't do too much with each kid but the the goal is just to get them to be able to make a sound and have that experience yeah. um yes. And, uh, but, um, but I'm proud to say that my mom was, um, was involved in, in, um, in designing that program, um, the instrument petting wow. zoo and, uh, and for many years was responsible for like, she transported the instruments to mm -hmm. and from the hall that were used for mm -hmm. the, um, for the kids to try and, uh, and got the volunteer musicians who manned each station and helped yes. the kids as they were going through. And so, yeah, so, um, so uh i was fortunate to be um sort of aware of through my mom and you know connected to um the boston symphony's um uh family concerts um yeah, from the time you. i was young and and you know go, going to hear orchestra live uh you know again it's i mean not every experience is going to stick with every person um but i remember going to symphony hall in boston just like looking around and just seeing that you know <laughs> palace you know obviously stunning. And, it's a stunning and, venue yes yeah 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 and um uh so so yes i was you know i uh i have um been the beneficiary of many privileges in my life among them um early exposure to um to all kinds of music and especially to orchestral classical music how did you mm. learn about what was then the nashua symphony mm. now symphony new hampshire was there um and and tell me about the audition process also like how did that how was that yeah i um i was trying to remember what actually got me to the um what actually got me to the, to the audition and mm -hmm. i and i can't remember how i knew about the audition like how it was advertised or um who told me about it or where I saw um, a posting um, for it. Um, but, uh, but I do remember going to um, the home of our then personnel manager, um, Hannah Sherman Rafa and, um, uh, and Hannah. Um, so she, so these auditions were actually in her house and Royston Nash, our yeah. music director was there in yeah. her house. And, and so I remember playing for him uh, in Hannah's living room. Um, you know, no. Now we have, um, you know, when we do our auditions, you know, we have screens up, and we have, you know, it's a sort of a um, uh, yeah more involved process and an audition mm -hmm. committee that um, involves musicians from the orchestra as well as music director, and you know, so. Um, but uh, but at that time, it was just um, the. The music director uh so and 
the person okay. auditioning, like alone in a room. And <laughs> I remember asking me what I, you know, well, you know, what would you like to play? And I said, oh, what would you like me to play? You know, <laughs> it's your orchestra. What do you want to hear? And, um, and so, uh, yeah, so he asked me to play, um, you know, several different uh, orchestral excerpts um, that, um, you know, so he could get a sense of how I played. And, sure, sure. Um, um, and fortunately, uh, he was, um, he was happy with that. And, you know, I, I, um, uh, I, because, because Nashua uh, is so close to Boston, you know, many of our, um, players, most of our players, I would say come from the sort mm -hmm. of greater Boston, larger, greater Boston area, right. The right, greater, right, Boston, right. right. And, um, and, uh, um, and we're fortunate to have um, a tradition of excellent brass playing in, in Boston. And um, yeah, so I felt very, very fortunate to be able to, um, uh, to be the one who was offered, um, no, offered this position out of, um, you know, the, uh, you know, what certainly was a, um, was a competitive field of, uh, of musicians. I'm sure. You know, there's a special place in my heart for Symphony New Hampshire because I started, um, playing there when I was, um, young and, and, you know, not an experienced, um, musician and, um, and I was able to sort of grow up with the orchestra, it felt like. So, um, so I have an appreciation for, um, for the orchestra. What yeah. are some of your favorite performing experiences or just memories with the orchestra? You know, I would say in a, in a large sense, um, one of the most fulfilling experiences that I've had in Symphony New Hampshire has been being able to see, um, you know, from up close and, you know, in some ways from the inside, um, the development of the, um, of the, of the group as a performing unit and also, um, uh, as an organization, uh, and it's very rewarding, uh, making connections with, um, audience members making connections with uh, with trustees, making connections with young people. Um, I think those are the um, those are the things that I remember the most. You know, um, going into um, the public school system uh, and playing yes. educational concerts with the brass quintet. Um, and in fact, I think we're filming uh, one coming up that is going to be used right um, in the in the school systems. Like over a week, yes. Yeah. So like that's yeah. the, and that's a really big deal to be able to, to hear them. be one of those, you know, um, be the person like letting a kid hear what a trumpet sounds like, sure. um, live up close, you know, maybe for the first time, probably for the first time, like in many, many cases for the first time. And, um, and yeah. having that, uh, opportunity and that responsibility of making that, extremely important first impression on kids. So like having parents on, um, uh, on board, not just for their own engagement, but to facilitate the engagement of, um, of the kids of the next generation is important. Mm -hmm. Um, engaging with our, you know, we were talking earlier about our, uh, wonderful, uh, board of trustees, engaging with our trustees is extremely That's important. Engaging with the people who are already going to our concerts is mm -hmm. extremely important, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and strengthening our connections with the people who are, you know, who are already coming and already appreciate what we do. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of uh, competition for people's time and attention, and we need to make sure that we continue to earn that um, you know, even from the people who are already um, engaged with us to to some yeah. degree. So, yeah. yeah, I would say that's probably you know um, my those are the mo most meaningful moments for me when it's been you know some combination of performing and making music, which I love to do, mm -hmm. and um, making a connection um, uh, with. Uh, you know, and making a connection with someone or some group of people um, so that there are more people just who feel a part of what we're doing. It's a great, 
great point. One of my favorite things to do is open our rehearsals to audience members. Mm. That's one of the best things you can do. When, when COVID, when this pandemic has come to a halt, next season, I would love to open rehearsals, have them come up on stage, see the orchestra up close and personal. This will spark so much inter interest in what we're trying to do. And it's just a really welcoming experience. And this way we can all talk about the music up right. close and personal in a way that we can't do during the concert necessarily. Um, so I'm looking forward to that too. And hoping, I, I hope the musicians will be involved too in uh, welcoming our wonderful audience and our board of trustee members. I love it when we see in rehearsals, a board member attend right. a rehearsal. They're, they're amazed by how much progress is made and where it started to where it ends up is always a great thing to hear. Um, right. And just yeah. seeing that interaction, you know what I mean? That interaction between the musicians, me, it's, it's a great, it's a great process to witness. We can embrace the opportunity to um, have an audience in, a, in the performance that understands a little bit more about how we got to that performance. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it mm -hmm. um, lessens the quality of the performance for people to have, you know, um, read a rough draft. You know, I think it, I think it, can I think it can make the performance more um, more engaging and more meaningful and anything we can do uh, to achieve that I feel like is 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 worth uh, investing in this upcoming um, concert this live stream I should say mm. you are going to be performing in a brass quintet it's not going yeah. to be the full orchestra you're you're performing a piece and and I I was introduced to this piece by an Indian American composer uh, Rena. Esmail. Uh, it's yep. called uh, Tutarana, I believe is how you pronounce it. Yep. And it combines a little bit of Hindustani classical music with Western music. You know, tell me a little bit about what it's like to perform, first off, with a brass quintet versus a full orchestra, and what you're excited about uh, in performing this work by Rina. Right. Um, so, um, so I haven't read Rina. So, you know, what I know about the piece is, um, uh, is based on, um, you know, on what I've, what I've read, um, mm -hmm. uh, about the history of, but it's an interesting history. Um, yeah. so, um, uh, the title Tutarana is a, a combination of Tuti, meaning all and Tarana, um, which is a North, um, uh, North Indian, um, uh, musical form that's very, um, articulate and very rhythmic. And um, and she wrote it, I believe, originally for a choral ensemble, and um, and uh, and it's really fun to hear it in that form and hear the you know the the vocal articulations um, that in in the brass quintet version um, that Rena later made uh, um, gets translated into you know brass um, articulations, which are very you know um, as you know being a trumpeter you know very similar in terms of. The way we the way we use our tongues to articulate um right. so um but the like most for me the most interesting part of the backstory of the piece was um what seems to have been an just an unintentional um connection to um the me too movement and uh, an appreciation of women in history and women in our society and um and so the um, Tarana, um, not only is, is a, um, North Indian, uh, musical form, but also, um, the first name of, um, Tarana Burke, who mm. was the founder of the Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the idea that she, that, that Rena, um, you know, chose that title, not realizing that and yeah. wrote it for, and I think it was even, she even wrote it for women's chorus. I, I, think, so. I think, I don't think it was even right. mixed chorus. Yeah specifically written for yes. and the fact that 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 um happened you know um yeah. through you know through chance or whatever right um uh, maybe some subconscious awareness uh but um but that 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 rena you know says was absolutely not intentional at the time but that mm -hmm. she really embraced when she realized that um and so um yeah so i think that makes um yeah, that makes the piece even more even more meaningful. Tell me a little bit about 
New Hampshire, you've been obviously with the orchestra now, like you said, almost 25 years. Uh, you live in Massachusetts, as does the I majority do. of our musicians. Right. But I've grown to love um, Nashua during my two years here now, close to two years. And um, what is it about New Hampshire, Nashua that you enjoy? Yeah, well, you know, the um, the music that we get to make there and the people that we get to make it with and for, I think is, you know, would certainly be my primary thing. Um, you know, I love, um, I love living so close to New Hampshire because um, my, uh, my son and I are snowboarders. And so um, being able to um, go up to, um, to Loon or to uh, Waterville Valley, um, <clears throat> so much in the way of, you know, just beautiful um, hikes and just, I mean, New Hampshire is such a beautiful state, right? And it's gorgeous. so as, you know, as a, as a um, full-time performing musician and a parent, like, a lot of times I have my head down more than, you know, ideally I would like, right? So I don't um, always uh, take the time to, um, you know, well, I'm going to be in uh, Nashua anyway, like, let me go another hour further north and go for a, you know, hike or an hour further west and go for a hike on Mount Monadnock right. or, you know, something like that. Um, yeah, sure. But, um, so uh, things are usually, for me, packed in pretty tightly. Um, mm -hmm. But there have been a couple of times when, like, after Symphony New Hampshire rehearsals, um, you know, we get out of, we get, get out of rehearsal at, you know, 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night, and I'd go yeah. up to, um, to, uh, to one of the mountains that had, like, a midnight, um, uh, midnight session, you know, nice. and go, go snowboarding from midnight to three in the morning hey, or something like that, really? you know, under the oh, lights yeah, and, uh, and, and stuff like that. So every once in a while, I, I make, I make time to do something cool, um, yeah. <laughs> and fun like that. But, um, yeah. but, you know, again, like the main thing that brings me to, to New Hampshire is, um, is making music and, right. um, and working with the people, um, <laughs> there who make it, you know, possible for us to make music. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. One of the great things about uh, this pandemic has been the fact that we've been able to do smaller concerts in different venues throughout the state mm -hmm. of New Hampshire. I tell yeah. you, I love back last October when we performed at the Londonderry Historical Society. Oh, <laughs> what, what a venue. venue that was. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what, and what an audience too, like that was, um, that was, you know, for, for something that, that, had to be, you know, for safety, had to be outdoors and socially distanced and the quintet sort of, um, you know, separate from the audience. And like, given all of those uh, sort of spatial requirements, mm -hmm. um, the uh, the engagement of the or audience, the um, the connection with the audience, where I, I felt like was remarkable. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that performance. Well, I have a fun question. This was this is the final question, but it's um, name a favorite beverage. It can be alcoholic, non-alcoholic. Scotch. <laughs> I like how you think. Uh, that goes well, though. Here's the next part, though. That goes well with a particular piece of music. Scotch. Um, so <laughs> yeah. Um, you know that's the that's the special thing about scotch is that it goes well with all particular pieces of music so um you, you know yeah. i have i have my own preferences for uh type of you know i tend to be more of a um uh uh more of a complex pd <laughs> you know leg of a um, yes. kind, kind of um uh kind of scotch drinker but i'm not you know into you know if it's scotch or even our executive director mark there every once in a while even gets me to drink bourbon and that's nice too um i don't drink much but when i do um you know that's what i drink and i feel like it goes with everything so it really does it, it and especially goes well with miles davis i was listening the other night to some miles davis recordings and i was like oh yeah. this this i think i was drinking um a mckellen and it was so good the mckellen 15 one of my favorites you know richard thank you for taking the time today to speak with me and share your 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 feelings about symphony new hampshire your experiences and um thank you for all that you do i really appreciate it thank you yeah it's a it's a pleasure roger and i appreciate everybody who um 
who takes the time to to tune in and check out this uh, this conversation. And um, you know, I hope that uh, if it sparks any questions, that um, anybody who you know sees and or hears this video and and um, uh, and wants more information, has follow up questions, mm -hmm. you know, about anything, will feel um, uh, comfortable getting in touch um, through Symphony New Hampshire. Um, you know, on our website, there's contact information and, um, uh, and I'm easy enough to, you know, I'm easy enough to get in touch with. So, you know, invite anybody who has any questions who is thinking about coming to a Symphony New Hampshire concert and isn't sure if it's for you, um, or, you know, has some questions about the trumpet or music in general. Um, like I'm happy to, um, uh, I'm happy to hear from, uh, happy to hear from you and happy to, to do my best to, um, to tell you what I know. Well, thank you for mentioning that. I mean, uh, really, uh, we have a wonderful audience and there's always interesting stories that um, obviously that we can share about the orchestral experience and what it's like to be an orchestral musician. So thanks for mentioning that. And yeah. I will see you in a few days. Thank you. Right on. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Roger. Yeah, thank you.